Christmas Sunday where we have an opportunity to gather and worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We will do a number of things together in honor of Jesus. We're going to pray. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to listen to music. We're going to see our young people who will play. And then we will hear a word from the Holy Bible. And then we will fellowship and enjoy the spirit of Jesus Christ. And so we invite you to not just spectate, but we invite you to participate. Make yourself at home. Clap your hands. Sing and rejoice. Because we are here for no other reason than for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Jesus, we thank you. We thank you because in you dwell the fullness of the Godhead family. In you dwells the light of life. And that light lights the way for us as your creation. And so God, we want you to know that we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the privilege that we have to gather in your presence. Free of persecution. Lord Jesus, of any type of government interaction to discourage us from worshiping you. We thank you for the mind to be in your house today. We thank you, Lord, for the person sitting next to us that we gather together because you said that if it's just two or three gathered in your name, that you would be in our midst. And so, Jesus, today we're not going to ask you for a litany of things. We're just going to praise you. We're going to worship you. We're going to give you what you deserve. And if you want something from us, then you ask us because freely we give. Now, God, we present according to your word our bodies as a living sacrifice unto you. And we, Lord God, pray that it be received into heaven. Receive our songs. Receive everything that we give to you as a gift. We don't have a lot of gold. We don't have any frankincense or earth. But Lord, we give you our voice. We give you our attention. We give you our praise. We give you our worship. We give you these moments on this day as a gift, a glory unto you. Have your way as only you can. In Jesus' name.
will sing unto the Lord a new song, for he had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arms had gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly shown in the sight of the heathen. He had remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All the hands of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise with your voice, singing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that do it there. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together. Before we get, and let's read together. Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people will be equitable. In Jesus' name, God, the Lord, and may we see the Lord. Thank you. 
get on this morning. It was written by Sister Megan E. Tess. Can we give her a hand? Sister Megan, give us a brief moment we're going to set up for our skit in Jesus' name. It is called The Birth of Jesus. worthy by God to give birth to his one and only son. As excited and overjoyed as she might have felt, she might have felt a little worried. How would she explain this to, this to her husband to be joking? So Mary is with child. She says she was from the Holy Spirit. How can this be? Okay, I know what I should do. I will celebrate the divorce her quietly because I don't want her to be mocked or shamed. As Joseph considered divorcing Mary, he fell asleep. And behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Just like that, Joseph and Mary were married. As the end of the pregnancy drew near, Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem, because in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Joseph was of the family of Jacob, and they had to register in Bethlehem. While in Bethlehem, Mary realized it was time to give birth to baby Jesus.
gave way to a first-born son in a rational swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. And in his native region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear.
joy to the world, the Lord is mine. Let me see for thee. who wrote that play that our young people just performed. Amen. And I didn't know it, didn't know anything about it, but we're going to follow what they did and read a little bit of the story of the birth, birth of Jesus Christ. We're going to skip a little bit, but we're going to stay in the first chapter. We're going to read a few verses and 
jump in that chapter so we can have the context of what is happening here in the name of the Lord. A lot of us know about Jesus, and we know that Jesus' his parents were Joseph and Mary. But Jesus had a cousin, had a cousin. He had, um, that cousin's name was John, and Elizabeth had a cousin, and um, her name, uh, well, there was Zacharias, uh, Mary had a cousin, and it was Elizabeth and Zachariah. And the issue was that they were older, Zachariah and Elizabeth, and they could not have kids. And verse 11, it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to them standing on the right side on the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. This is around the same season of Jesus. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Verse 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. He's blessed you, thou art blessed among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, saying, and saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. In other words, I don't know what the angel's gonna say to me. The angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. It's a good thing to be in favor with God. Amen. Behold, thou that sh thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Verse 34, then said Mary to the angel, how shall this be? Saying that I, I don't even know a man, I've never been with a man. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, if you don't believe me, here's a son. Your cousin Elizabeth, she hath conceived a son as old as she is. And she, in fact, is in the sixth month of her childbearing. And she who was called barren, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Verse 39, so after the angel Gabriel left, Mary rose in those days and went to the hill country with haste unto the city of Jeru Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. This is where we're going to put our anchor for today. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, that's John, leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Mm -hmm. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from God. How do you want God to perform for them? Amen. And Mary said, my soul, she sang this song, yeah. 
doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in my God, my Savior. I want to take a moment today to just talk to you about the concept of when Jesus shows up. When Jesus shows up. And when he does show up, what do I do? Today is Christmas Eve. It was interesting because I met a couple yesterday at my son's basketball practice and they saw me reading my Bible in the bleachers and they sat next to me and began to ask me some questions. And one of the individuals said, well, you know, I don't celebrate Christmas. And she said, you know, it's, 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 it's not in the Bible. And she expected me to come back there and I said, well, you're right. I said, in fact, Christmas as we know it is taken from winter solace, which is a pagan holiday, a mouth drop. And I said, yeah, I said, but I still celebrate Christmas, not just on December 25th, but I celebrate Christmas every day. And I say that to say, because yeah, we know that the theologians suggest that Jesus was possibly born in the spring, somewhere around April. This episode that just took place with Gabriel announcing to Mary the birth of Jesus was probably around June of 6 BC. But the point is, Jesus said that it doesn't matter when you're talking to that woman where you worship. You don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore. What matters is if you worship. In fact, Paul picked it up in Romans 14 and said, listen, some people are going to be vegetarian. Some people are going to be meat eaters. Some people will esteem one day higher than another. It doesn't matter what you do. Don't argue over doubtful disputations. But just if God gave you a blessing, rejoice. That's what Romans 14 and 6 says. And so whatever month you celebrate, whatever day or time one esteems, the fact is Jesus was born. And he showed up in my life. The skeptic may be here today or watching on live stream and suggest that when you observe all the evil of the world, you'll say that Jesus hasn't showed up. He's not in a world like today. People with nuclear bombs and people doing all kinds of pillaging and raping. Even the, the country that we stand on was built upon the blood and the backs of many. You'll say, where is Jesus in all of that? The hurting today may say that there's no way Jesus was with me when I was hurt and when I was abused. The heartbroken may say that, listen, I called upon Jesus when I really needed something. My, my difficulty in my family, my difficulty in my school, and Jesus did not show up when I called him. Well, I was sent here specifically today on Christmas Eve to give you an early Christmas present, whether you celebrate it or not. All right. And that present is Jesus was there, yes. Jesus is here, yes. and Jesus will always be there. Yes. Because my Bible tells me in Revelations 1 and 8 that Jesus speaking, I am the Alpha right. and I am the Omega. I know you don't know the Greek alphabet, so it goes like this, I am A and I am Z. Right. He says, listen, I am the beginning, I am the ending, yes. saith the Lord. Yes. And I am which was, which is, and which is to come. The Almighty. And don't you forget. And so if Jesus is here, the first biblical truth is, I must know how to recognize him when he shows up. And so when he does, what do I do? You see, our text reveals the first time that perhaps Jesus actually showed up on the scene and John shows us what to do when Jesus shows up. You see, right after the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary, she went to visit her cousin. You know, when you hear some good news, they didn't have Snapchat, they didn't have texting. She had to hop on something, her feet, and walk a little way to see her cousin. To see, listen, I, I heard you were six months pregnant. And I, she wouldn't have known. And so she sees what's going on. But she walks in the room, something happens. Now, 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 now check this out. Elizabeth is about six months pregnant. Now, the, the, the Bible doesn't tell us when Mary actually conceived. But if you do a little bit of math, it doesn't matter. 
The fact is that when God spoke a word to Mary, the seed of that word was already in her womb. And so whether it was a literal seed, like a seed of a baby, or whether it was the figurative seed of the word, what God says will always come to pass. You're 80 years old and an angel shows up to you looking like Brother Schneider and says to you that you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a baby. You see, you have to know how to recognize God versus the devil, versus your friends, versus your neighbors, versus the media. When God speaks, he cannot lie. And the enemy will have you thinking that your life is always going to be like it is today. No, it's not. You're looking at a screenshot. You're not looking at the whole picture. Hallelujah. But God is here and he will always be here. Not, now, when you look at the fact that Elizabeth was six months pregnant and Mary maybe had an embryo, I don't know. But the point is, this is a message I, I could preach just to Planned Parenthood because the fact is the baby was in the womb and which lets you know that it was already a formed being with operating senses. Come on. John was six months old in the womb and could sense and could hear. That's why the best place to raise your kids is the church, a good church, a true church, a real church. When they hear the singing, when they hear the instruments, they hear the word of God. Don't you know they in the belly patting their feet and tapping their hands? Listen, my son was in my wife's womb and she complained about the hitting. He was always hitting something. And now that he's born, he just always is tapping on the table, the, the seat, the back of my chair. Drives me absolutely out of my mind. But the point was they're operating beings. They're just not the globs of flesh that have no life and no faculties and no brain. And so we see here that from the womb, John heard Mary's voice, but he sensed Jesus. You may hear my voice, but you need to sense Jesus. You may hear the voice of the choir or the musicians' melodies, but you have to hear and sense Jesus. You see, some of us wait for God to crack the sky like Moses and the old. God ain't going to do that. He said, listen, I chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. And to us that believe preaching is the power of God unto salvation. But for us that don't believe, it's just foolish. Ah, that's hogwash. It don't take all that. Well, Jesus was born and he left a script that he wrote similar to Sister E. Test that we have to follow. And if he says it takes all that, then it has to take all of that. And so Mary was in that room and Jesus, hallelujah, was in her womb while Mary was in that room, room, hallelujah, and John was able to sense that somebody was in the building that had all power in his hands. And so Jesus is recognized primarily by our senses. Uh-huh. I didn't say what you think. Hallelujah. But our senses. Why? Because our thoughts come from our environments or the things that we put ourselves by around. But where do our senses come from? They come from God. And so God uses that which he created in us to communicate with us. And so Mary, hallelujah, had this baby and John could not see him. You know, we have eyes. Sometimes we can see God or Jesus move. You know, sometimes you can see him operating literally or figuratively in your life. They say, my grandmother had cancer in her body and I just got another report that it came back and then I got another report yesterday that when they looked at what they saw the last time, it was gone again. Hallelujah. And so I can see God with my eyes because this report says I have cancer. This report says I have a problem. But when I put it before Jesus Christ and cast my cares upon him. And I look at the next report that comes from the Lord. I can see, hallelujah, that the two reports. See, people don't believe that's true anymore. Jesus still has all power. And so my senses allow me to see when Jesus shows up. Sometimes I can hear him speak to me. Yes. 
I hear him speak sometimes through my consciousness. You may hear that inner voice. Listen, sometimes that's God just speaking to you out of good sense. Sometimes he speaks through life situations. You know, you wonder why every door keeps getting closed in your face, but the only door that opens the church door. Uh, duh, go to church, and then the other doors will be open. Life situation. Sometimes he used people to speak to you. The preacher, the counselor, the therapist. Sometimes he uses these things like the word of the almighty God to speak to you. But the Bible says he or she that has an ear, let him hear. The problem is today people want to hear what they want to hear when they want to hear it. But the truth is the truth no matter what day of the week it is. And I love serving a God that doesn't change. Uh, two plus two is going to always equal four in God's economy. And man's economy, one day is five, one day is seven, one day it don't make no sense. Listen, but in God's economy, a man is a man no matter what. A woman is a woman no matter what. Hallelujah. Lying is lying no matter what. Truth is true. I don't have a truth. Stop listening to people say my truth and their truth and his truth. Listen, let God be true. And every man, the Bible says, be a liar. And so with the other six, I'm not going to go through all five because you can't really taste God, but the psalmist did say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Kind of like a euphemism or a metaphorical model. And you can't sometimes, with other, you can't really smell him all the time. I haven't ever smelled him. so, But I can see him. I can, I can hear him and I can touch him. You say, how do you touch him? You touch him through repentance. You touch him through prayer. You touch him through fasting. You touch him through perseverance. You see, the way to get God's attention is to fall on your knees with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and say, Lord, I need you in my life. I need some help with this situation. I want to live totally for you. And see, when a person does that, they're able to touch Jesus. And I got news for you. Anybody ever touch Jesus? If he touch you, if you touch him, he'll touch you back. I, I like playing tag with Jesus. I, I tag him in the morning for prayer. I say, now Lord, touch me sometime throughout my day. Hallelujah. Touch me, Lord, at the stoplight. Touch me in the bathroom, in the office. Touch me wherever you want to touch me. But I promise you, I'm going to touch you every morning first. Hallelujah. And so there is a sixth sense. You know, we have five senses, but there's a sixth sense. You know, mothers know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you when you feel something just ain't right with your baby. Or when you just, this, you know, you, you feel something, someone looking at you, someone behind you. It's a sixth type of, of sense that there is. And, 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 and that's what I want to talk about, you see, because John couldn't see because he was still in the womb. He couldn't necessarily hear, hallelujah, but he, well, he did hear, right, the Bible says, because he heard Mary's voice, but he couldn't hear Jesus. That's what I'm trying to get to. And he definitely couldn't touch Jesus, but he had a sixth sense. He just, the old folks used to say, I just got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. It, it doesn't look like it's going to be all right. It doesn't, hallelujah, seem like it's going to be all right. Every telling me, everyone's telling me it's not going to be all right. But deep down right. in my core, I just have a feeling that Jesus is going to show up and everything is going to be all right. And so you say to me, what, how, how do I get in touch? Well, you have to understand the next biblical truth is that distractions and sins work against the senses so one can't or won't recognize Jesus when he shows up. And so there's distractions. I have phones and I have technology and I have legitimate things like work and I have kids. But you see, nothing can distract us to the point where we miss Jesus. Wasn't that Mary? She sat at the feet of Jesus, not the mother, but the other Mary. I believe, and Martha was busy doing stuff all the time, and they both needed to be operating, but Jesus at that time 
time said Mary chose the better part because she knew that when I show up you need to hear what I have to say and don't be distracted by the busyness of life don't be distracted by all of the, the, the temptations of life don't go oh God hallelujah but don't let sin keep you from what God has for you now a lot of people say I'm not gonna come to church because it requires me to be perfect no 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 I'll raise my hand and say I'm a sinner that's been saved by grace any sinners that have been saved by grace don't let a red robe fool you don't let the person's tie next to you fool you don't let the skirt fool you everybody in here had to get to know Jesus for themselves and when he showed up in our lives we had enough sense to fall to our knees and say Lord help me please and he said if I help you you gotta live for me and some of us took that oath seriously and said for God I live and for God I die someone took it seriously and said I will bless the Lord at all times December 24th December 25th December 26th January through February through March April May June July I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise I'm, I'm not going to boast myself up but his praise shall be in my mouth and so I just have a reminder that Jesus has shown up but the biblical truth about to bring it to a close here is that my inability to notice Jesus does not mean that he isn't there come on you breathe in something right now you can't see and it's still there if not hold your breath for a little while and tell me how to make out you, 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 there's a lot going on you're a scientist a biologist in the atmosphere fooling out there in the woods there's a lot going on out there with carbon dioxide you can't see it hallelujah so don't you have a carbon isn't it carbon dioxide in your house you can't smell it you can't see it but they call it the silent killer you see but you still believe in it you don't leave your car running in the garage talking about I want to keep it warm because it's cold no you shut it off not just because you don't want to burn gas but you don't want to die and so miss me with I gotta see this I got listen when you put yourself in the presence of Jesus Christ the senses he'll give you what's called sensory overload that's why you see people it's not, listen you can go to any country and see people that really know Jesus they're running and ain't nobody chasing them they're jumping and they're not on glass on the bottom of their feet they're shouting and they're not on fire but the fire of the Holy Ghost it's not a listen you're gonna get yourself all excited for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and you're gonna come in the house of the Almighty God and act like you can't get as excited. Listen, I praise God. Hallelujah. Better than the fans at your next stadium. I'm not gonna listen, listen, listen. The offering is not as much as a stadium ticket. It's not as far of a drive for some of us. And the Bible says we come together. The white and the black and the Jew and the Gentile. Hallelujah. The Jamaican, the Haitian, the Dominican, the Puerto Rican. I know the cultural wars, but we all meet at the cross because Jesus was born. Hallelujah. For the Jew and the Gentile. He died. you do I'll be there in a minute Jesus is still alive you distracted by CNN I don't care who's marrying who and who the president is Jesus is still king of kings he's still lord of lords don't tell me about how much I make and what they just voted on and how this is going to impact my tax bracket give and it shall be given unto you Good measure pressed down, shaking together. Didn't God protect his people in the famine in Genesis with, with Joseph? There are provisions for God's people. And just because 2017 is riding out.
out the door, it still doesn't mean that God's provisions are gone. When he promises this church something, it's for everybody as long as you stay here. You hold this thing and remind yourself 30 years from now, you told me just like you promised me. You promised me just like you promised Abraham. You just like you said to Sarah, and so provide Jehovah Jireh. Heal, heal me in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's still king. And I'm glad I can celebrate him. I know why I'm celebrating Jesus. Because he showed up in my life. Let the church say amen. And so you have to recognize uh, Jesus for who he is. Uh, hallelujah. And I like this part. Uh, the Lord told me, listen, let the saints know uh, that when Jesus shows up, uh, he doesn't show up empty handed. Uh, ain't nothing worse uh, than inviting somebody over for dinner. Uh, and you tell them, you bring the ribs. Uh, and you bring the macaroni. Uh, and you bring the, you got the cheap people. Uh, that all they want to buy is chips. Uh, hallelujah. They don't want to buy no meat brother again yeah. they just want chips they sign up for the stuff they can get in the dollar store they say I'm going to bring all that well it only costs you ten dollars you bought ten things hallelujah but when you're depending on it and when they show up oh I didn't have any more ribs oh I didn't have time to go get the macaroni and what happens they empty handed but them kind of folk go get the biggest plate of food and sit down at the best place on the couch and eat like they did everything gets on your nerves hallelujah I ain't talking about y'all I'm talking about them folk in the other church hallelujah but Jesus doesn't show up empty handed hallelujah he shows up with blessings hallelujah 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 he shows up with things because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy that's one thing thank you Holy Ghost uh, that Jesus shows up with. Uh, he shows up with joy. Uh, I, Isaiah 9 and 6 says uh, if you need direction uh, Jesus will show up uh, with direction uh, because Isaiah said uh, he's a wonderful counselor. Uh, the Bible says if you need power uh, to break the chains of addiction uh, you need power uh, to get a job. You need power uh, to break the cycle of poverty. You need power to get out of that relationship. Jesus, Isaiah said, he's not only hallelujah, he's not only he said he's a mighty God. That's what he said. He's a counselor but he's also a mighty God. He's God almighty. If you need protection, he's the everlasting father. I may not have known my daddy and nothing can take the place of a daddy. But Jehovah come on, what's it? Jehovah Shammah, that's it. He will be my companion if I let him when he shows up. Hallelujah. He'll be there with me when nobody is with me. If I need peace, Isaiah said, he's the prince of peace. Later for the prince of the power of air. The devil can't got nothing on God's peace. The Bible says he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind where is your mind when Jesus shows up because if it's on Jesus and hey, glory you can have peace in the midst of the storm you can have peace in the valley I know some of you and I don't mean any harm you don't have a lot of people to spend the holidays with the Lord just told me in my heart some of you are going to go home and life isn't just the way you want it. You're by yourself. You don't even have enough money to buy gifts for your kids that you would want to do. But I have news for you. As the tear rolls down your face, as the heartache eats at your heart, just do this one thing. Tell the Lord how you feel and say, I'm going to praise you. By this year, next time, by this month, next year, God, if you show up, I'll live for you. If you show up, I'll serve you. If you bless me, I'll work with you. Now, don't say it if you don't mean it, but if you mean it, then say it and watch God operate. 
but your gift is going to come from above. Whether God touches his heart or he just blesses you. Stand up, sister. Wave your hand. You. Stand up. Wave your hand. Why is she waving her hand? Because she got a dog last year. She wanted a dog. And the God gave her a sign. Now we laugh it off. But didn't they give Mary a sign? That Elizabeth is six months pregnant. She wanted her dog. And she said, my husband, wear your hand, sir. Let me preach. You've been saved long enough. I can use you now without you getting offended. He said, I don't want no dog. And she said, the first issue was, she went to him and he said, I don't care anymore. When you serve God, God will touch your husband's heart. You don't believe it. You'll touch your wife's heart. I may have to wait a day. I may have to wait 10 years. But he's coming. She's coming. You just hold on. She said someone rang a bell. She went to the door and they handed her a dog. I said, wait, wait, did you know the person? Nah, nah, nah. Have you ever did you have you seen the person since? I said, what? Grab the dog. And she walked in the house with a dog. Never seen the person again. I'm still jealous of that two-year-old testimony. What if that was an angel for her? Baby, you better never backslide. Gabriel came and gave you a message that said, God will always be with you. And he confirmed his word by putting her husband in the church, putting their marriage back together, and filling them both with the Holy Ghost. And now they have the nerve to come up in church matching, wear the same colors, thinking they fly. four minutes and 22 seconds. But you see, what do I do when Jesus shows up? Let me get to it now. Well, let me just say this. You know what the best gift was? It's the Holy Ghost. John got the Holy Ghost from the womb when Jesus showed up. My God, my God. Elizabeth got the Holy Ghost before Jesus even came and before Acts 2 happened. Listen, you don't have to cry and whine. The Holy the Lord told me early this morning at 5, he said you just tell the people to start praising me my name and they're going to get the Holy Ghost. He said stop preaching it and beating it. He said preach me and tell them to praise me like they lost their mind and then they'll lose their tongue. Tell them to praise me Hallelujah. from the depths of their heart their heart. You may not believe it, but Elizabeth was just in the room and when Jesus showed up she got the Holy Ghost. I believe that if two or three gathered in a room the Holy Ghost will show up. The power will show up. And you say, well, how do I praise him? Well, I can give you a number of ways. We've been talking the last few weeks. Well, let's just look at the text. The first thing is, when Mary came in the room, the baby John, with no development, had not crawled around to develop leg muscles yet, but somehow he could leap. He was able to leap. Sometimes when you praise God, now I can't get up high like I used to get. Come on, you might be able to get up there with that rim. I don't even think I can touch the foam at the bottom of the backboard anymore. Hallelujah. But I can still do a little something, something. Hallelujah. And so Tom leaped a little bit and praised to the Almighty God. What did Mary, hallelujah, who was it? Was Elizabeth? What did she do? She cried with a loud voice. I've been telling you for the last few weeks, you got to open up your mouth. Stop the psycho babble. You ain't an introvert or extrovert. You a Christian first. Open your mouth. Yeah. 
She must have read what song of uh, Moses. She must have heard about the song of Moses. She must have read that chapter in Isaiah. Because Mary said, listen, I got this baby. And I don't want to rock anything just in case the angel put that seed there. So I don't want to jump. I don't want to cry out too much. So I'm just going to sing a song. Hallelujah. And she sang, he's great. And I'm going to rejoice He's great and greatly To be prayed So I'm going to rejoice What are you saying preacher I don't care how you praise Shout for your blessing Shout for your blessing Shout for your blessing
to praise the Lord. And the Bible says, the word says that this year, this day, this month, hallelujah, for the rest of your life, you praise God no matter what. And that mountain has got to fall. That valley has got to be Christians that all they do is shout. No, 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 no. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. I got it written down. He said the saints know how to think their way. Hallelujah. How, the saints know how to think their way and read and study their Bible their way out of situations. Now they need to know how to praise you through situations. Because we, we dissect the words. And you got, the saints are on track there. Now they got to know how to praise me. So if I don't take them out, if they can't think their way out in the Bible, if they can't find their situation in the scripture, will they trust me and praise me? And glory to God, you raise me in the house. Sickness in your body, I'm going to still praise you. I'm going to my spouse to I'm going to still praise you. I don't even know how I'm going to pay the rent. I'm going to make good choices. I ain't going to make stupid choices, excuse me, but I'm going to make good choices and praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise the Lord. But do I have to be saved that? No. You have to obey. I don't care what you're wearing, where you're going, or what you're doing. You praise God and you put yourself in position when God shows up every Friday and every Sunday and you yes. praise Him, your life will change. We got an example over there. I got an example over there. Oh, you got an example over there. God gives us examples huh, that lets us know that with God, nothing is impossible. The psychiatrist says you gotta be a mess for the rest of your life. With God, nothing is impossible. You gotta be in the project because your fourth generation would right now. With God, nothing is impossible. He'll make you an eagle. You ain't gotta be a rat. He'll give you wings like an eagle so you can fly. Given your people what you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First and foremost, I pray that you help me to obey and not just talk but to live what is preached above reproach and blameless before your people. And touch every leader in the same way, touch every saint, remember every night. You know where we are. And you know where we need. Pray that your word be sealed in the hearts of your people. And we pray and we remember that you are the reason for the season. Lord, we pray that your will would be done. We thank you for showing up. Despite the failure, despite the pain, despite the loneliness and the doubt, our senses know that you're here. That's what we believe. And so we hope you direct and guide and let your word be true to every believer. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. 
be glorified, Lord, during this season. We pray that you will look upon those who are not in the positions that they would like to be in, whether it be spiritually, relationally, or financially, or any other way. I pray that you give direction as the wonderful counselor. Lend your power as the mighty God. Lend your protection as the everlasting Father. And lend your peace as the Prince. We love you. For you are good. In Jesus' name.
dear God, to bless you, dear God, Jesus, oh God, to bless you, oh God, oh God, your kingdom, dear Jesus, oh God, for your work to go forward, dear Father, my God. So I also, dear God, to bless each and every one that come before this morning and give their Jesus, oh God. Those that have not to give their Jesus, oh God, bless them, dear Jesus, oh God, to receive, dear God, that they can someday, Lord. So this morning as we come before you, dear God, Father, just touch everyone this morning, dear God, as we come before you.
various things. We gather in the church. Amen. Amen. To bring the new year in with Jesus Christ. And as Sister said, you'll have a chance to sing, testify. Amen. We'll watch a video that recaps some of the wonderful things that God has done in our midst. We'll serve communion. And then that'll be the first meal. We eat our first meal together. So around 12 or 5, we serve communion. The first meal every year is with the body of believers. So all are welcome to attend. Bring someone with you. Amen. We don't get out much past 12 or 12 30 because we want people to be able to get home in a reasonable hour. Amen. So you are welcome to come. And if you can't come then, come for our New Year's Day service. That's next Sunday. If you invited someone, would you please stand? If you invited someone to church, we want to recognize you. Wonderful. Wonderful. We're so thankful for you. Now listen, Saint. Next Sunday morning, put your commission coins in the envelope. Because on New Year's Eve, we're going to recognize the person for this quarter that has brought the most people to church. Now, some people forget to put their coins in. And so by default, we won't know. So it goes to the person who puts the envelopes in. So we don't want anyone disqualified. I know sister, I think you want like that. She don't care. <laughs> Amen. So bring them in. Just write on any envelope. Just write your name. Layla Graham. Put them in. And because some of y'all ain't returning them and we have to keep buying more. So the concept was we were going to recycle them. Amen. So put them in. Amen. And we'll recognize you. And I'm so excited because we also are going to give out the award of the Fisherman or Fisher Woman of the Year as well as the Discipleship of the Year Amen. Award. Amen. Amen. So you don't want to miss that in Jesus' name. I want to recognize Sister Brittany. Would you raise your hand? Yay. Look at Sister Brittany. Yay. 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 Amen. Sister Brittany broke my heart a year or so ago by moving all the way to Arizona. She came from UMass Lowell Bible class. Amen. Lord blessed her. She broke my heart. I went out there and begged her, please come back. Too. I didn't really do that. But the point is, she's back. She had a wonderful job. Well, she had a good opportunity at Arizona State. University working there, and now she's coming back. The Lord's gonna bless her. Lord, yeah, bless her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a piece of her testimony. She said, I recognize that I'm not in the same spiritual, mental, as emotional, physical, one of those. I know it's spiritual and mental, those are the ones I care about. Those, I'm not back in, I'm not where I need to be in those areas in this environment. And what person has enough sense, excuse my expression, sense to say, let me go back. To the environment so that I can be strong. Right. It's not good for my quality of life. Yes. And I scratch my head because I've been there alone. I've hiked up the step mountain, saddleback, and I've eaten. If I love, I love it out there. And I was like, well, if that sun and that weather and that food ain't enough to keep you out of the country, come on. <laughs> but God gave us a gift in bringing her back for Christmas. So we thank God for her. Mother is sent. We thank God for you, Mother. She's our mother in our midst in Jesus' name. Mother Miller, we thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for my mother being in the house, Mother Brown. Amen. Amen. Thank God for her being with us today. Thank God, Mother, for all of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Amen. Bring your brother. His turquoise shirt. He got his Christmas shirt on early. All right. <laughs>
What are my three overall? Husband, the best. Father, the best. Pastor, I could be. And, um, those are my goals. I mean, there's some details in there, but overall, I can't leave the church if I can't leave my home. That's right. I can't ask you to do things that I'm not doing in my own home. So I want to be the best husband first for my kids to see. I want to be the best parent first. And Layla gives me a grade every day after we do homework help. She grades me my ability to be patient. Amen. She gives me a grade. I'm not going to tell you what those grades are. But she gets to measure me. And then, of course, I want to be the best pastor. I have no other goals or desires in my life at all. I made a decent amount of money before. I'm kind of broke now, but I, but I thank God. That's my goal. So whatever you put in the box, thank you. I appreciate it. I love it because I am only, my wife will tell you, the only reason I'm in Massachusetts is because of God and because of you. I would not be here without those two. And so I love you from the bottom of my heart. There is no time too late for you to call me. There's no time too late for you to text me. No time too early for you to send me an email. I may not always get back and then read it, but I will get there. Amen. And just pray for me that I may serve you the way that God desires me to serve you in Jesus' name. So Merry Christmas. Enjoy the rest of your day. Let us stand as we are dismissed with all hearts and minds on board. With uplifted hands, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Unto Jesus Christ, our soon coming Savior, our King of Kings, we thank him for showing up in our lives. And now we know what to do. We praise you because all praise and glory and dominion belongs to you forever and ever in Jesus' name. One, two, three.